Amen. So uh, I, I want you to uh, just encourage your pastor. You know, there's a text I used uh, one time I preached pastor appreciation services. And, you know, there's a text in the Old Testament that says that the, um, the talking about the carpenter and the goldsmith. And it, you would think because uh, it, it would say the goldsmith encouraged the carpenter. But the text is found in Isaiah that said the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. And I thought that's an unusual text because the carpenter was just kind of the laity, the common people, whereas the goldsmith would have been the skilled trade. And you would have thought the skilled trade was encouraging the laity. But in that text, it said the carpenters encouraged the goldsmith. And so I'm going to tell you, as the people of God and as the laity, you can encourage or discourage the man of God. You can encourage what God is doing, or you can make it harder for the man of God to do it. And so... You're the carpenters. I say encourage the goldsmith. I say encourage the man of God and his family. And uh, I believe God will do good things in your assembly. Amen. Would you stand tonight as we look to the word of the Lord? This is what I felt God lay on my heart this afternoon while I was praying in our church. Uh, Acts chapter number 2. Amen. Acts chapter number 2. Starting in verse number 37 and reading down to... Through verse number 39, <clears throat> Acts 2 and 37. Acts 2 and 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Verse 39, I'd like to try to preach to you tonight for the promise, for the promise, the promise of the Holy Ghost. The promise is unto you and it's to your children and to all them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. May you, see, may you be blessed tonight as you're seated in the presence of the Lord. I have somewhat of a different title, but I pray I'll be able to kind of weave it together. I want to talk to you about Rooted in Pentecost. Rooted in Pentecost. Uh, I've preached the word rooted in our church seven, eight, ten times over the last few months um, because we live in a world to where it seems like many of our beliefs are being uprooted by the devil. One of those messages I preached was this one about being rooted in Pentecost. And I'm glad to be part of a Pentecostal movement. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not a Pentecostal monument. A monument is a statue to something that's dead. I don't think we're a monument because I believe our Lord is alive. I believe we should be a movement. <laughs> I believe we ought to be on fire for the Lord. Amen. I was preaching a camp meeting in uh, North Carolina a couple years ago. at a, uh, It was a church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee. And in that camp meeting was one of the professors of a church of God college that uh, had written a book. And his book was based on statistical research out of the church of God concerning the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And in his book, he stated that some only 30 to 32 percent of the uh, believers inside of the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, actually have experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, if you begin to really contemplate that, that only one out of every three believers inside of a Pentecostal movement have experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you would quickly have to say they are not rooted in Pentecost. Currently, the Assemblies of God in Springfield, Missouri is debating, removing from their actual belief and theology, is the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost actually speaking in tongues because much like the church of God, 
less than one out of three people inside of their movement have ever been baptized with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And so they are actually contemplating, arguing, debating, rewriting their theology that you don't have to speak in tongues to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Friend, here's what I want you to understand tonight. I'm not preaching to the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee. I'm not preaching to the Assemblies of God of Springfield, Missouri. But I am part of a Pentecostal movement, this independent, this Calvary holiness movement. But I would be naive to think that the same trend that is arising in the Cleveland, Tennessee Church of God and the same trend that is arising in the Assembly of God Church would not seek to get into our church as well. And what I have found in many churches that I'm preaching in, there are many that are sitting on our pews that have never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. They have felt the Spirit of God. They've even shouted and danced. But friend, I'm telling you, shouting is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. No, it's not. Feeling God and feeling the goodness of God and feeling a worship in your heart is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Getting saved and having your sins washed away is wonderful and makes us a candidate for heaven, but friend, it is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I want to be on guard. I said in 2013, I want to be on guard that we are rooted in Pentecost. Amen. That our forefathers and the experience that they have and the way that the old timers had church is the way that we're having church in 2013. I don't know about you, but I don't want this thing to die on my watch. I don't want to lose the moving of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to lose, amen, the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I want to be rooted in Pentecost. I said this is where our roots go back to, friend. I said they go much back, go back much deeper then 50, 60, 70 years ago, here and I roots go all the way back to the book of Acts uh, and the second chapter when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Uh, there came a sound from heaven uh, as of a rushing mighty wind uh, and it filled all the house uh, and clove and tongues like as a fire sat upon each of them uh, and they began to speak in tongues uh, as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Uh, hey, friend, I'm telling you, we better stoke the fire. Uh, we better fan the flame. Uh, we better be on guard. Uh, but when Jesus comes, uh, He's coming for a church on fire. Uh, he's coming for a church full of the power and the glory of God. Uh, not coming for a dead, backslid, lukewarm, charismatic church. Uh, he's coming for a church uh, that's worshiping God. Uh, magnifying God. And friend, I'm glad I am rooted. I am rooted. I am rooted in Pentecost. I'm glad I got in back when the fire was still burning. What about you? Notice the promise that we find in our text. It is to you. Not only to you, but it is to your children. And not only to your children, but it is those that are afar off. However you want to look at this text tonight, if you want to start with the Jews, it goes to the Gentiles. If you want to start to the first generation, it moves on to successive generations. But here's what I know. The promise is unto you. It is your promise that once you are baptized, once you have been, uh, your sins remitted by the blood of Jesus Christ, you say, preacher, are you telling us you've got to have the Holy Ghost to be saved? No, I'm not telling you. That is the blood plus nothing. 
That's not a trick question. You say amen. It's the blood plus nothing equals salvation. We're not part of the apostolic movement that says you've got to speak in tongues to be saved. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I took a trip to the altar and that ruby red blood of Jesus washed my sins away. Just like that lady last night, Sherry, that knelt over here. Friend, it was the the blood of Jesus Christ uh, that will remit our sins uh, and cast them as far as the east is from the west. Uh, but here's what I know. Uh, the Bible said uh, that after your sins are remitted uh, through the name of Jesus Christ, uh, there is an and. Uh, there is a subsequent experience. Uh, there's something more that God has for us. Uh, and He said, ye shall receive uh, the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, God uh, wants His church to move uh, to a deeper experience uh, into the power and the glory of God. And it is a birthright experience uh, for every born-again believer to seek, to expect, and to experience Pentecost. Uh, I don't want Pentecost to die. Hallelujah. I don't want it to die. Notice this. Not only... The promise, but the present. It is a gift. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When we come to this altar in just a little while tonight, hey, friend, I am not belittling you. If you have never been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I am not belittling your experience whatsoever. But I am telling you there is a Bible mandate. God desires for us to be full of the Holy Ghost. And you don't have to come to the altar and wonder, is it God's will for you to have it? Doesn't matter whether you're a young person or the oldest in the building. God's plan is uh, if you're covered by the blood of Jesus, if you're a child of God, uh, it is God's plan for then for you to begin to seek after the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, And it is a gift to be received. Uh, You don't have to beg God for it. Uh, You don't have to wonder is it God's plan. Uh, It is God's will to give it. Uh, And if it's a gift, uh, that means it's paid for by somebody else. When Christ went to the cross, the price was paid for when He ascended to glory. Amen. It is when the Holy Ghost comes. It is a telltale witness that the Father has accepted the sacrifice of the Son. When the Holy Ghost came, Jesus said, it is expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter cannot come. But if I go away, I will not leave you you comfortless, but I will send him unto you. What the Holy Ghost is telling us when the Holy Ghost falls in our life and speaks to us, it is the Spirit of God telling us the Father has accepted the sacrifice of His Son, and He sent the Holy Ghost to bear witness. Hey, friend, I'm telling you, we need the Holy Ghost more now than we've ever needed Him before. We don't need less fire. We need more fire. We don't need less of a move of God. We need more of a move of God. It's darker than it's ever been. It's more wicked than it's ever been. We need more of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I was preaching in a holiness church one time, and the deacon pulled me off to the side. And he didn't like what I said about having to be Full of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He said, hey, me and God settled that a long time ago. I said, is that right? He said, yeah, when I got saved. He said, I went into the bedroom and I got down beside the bed and I said, God, I want the power of your Spirit. God, I'm not worried about tongues. I just want the fruit of the Spirit. And he said, God gave me the fruit of the Spirit. I said, well, have you ever spoken in tongues? As the Spirit of God gives you the utterance. He said, no, but I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I said, well, I disagree with you. Because when they were full of the Holy Ghost in the second chapter of the book of Acts, 
they spoke in tongues. In the 10th chapter, when they were full of the Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues. In the 19th chapter, when they were full of the Holy Ghost, they began to speak in tongues. And friend, I believe that when the Holy Ghost comes, he began to speak for himself. That he's God. Oh, hallelujah. I say God on a Wednesday night in revival. Would you love for the glory of God to fall? Would you love for God to send the wind of his spirit and to turn this place upside down? I'm glad when I got in holiness and I got in Pentecost, it was alive. The church was on fire. Amen. We had church, boy. And they'd run. They'd dance. They'd sing. They'd shout. But a lot of churches have lost that fire. But remember when God said, I need to describe the Holy Ghost. He said, yeah, it'll be, it'll be that wind. But he said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. 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 Cloven tongues. It is the power of Pentecost. Do you remember when the Holy Ghost fell in your life? I said, do you remember when the Holy Ghost fell in your life? Aren't you glad God, he is a God of fire, is he not? I said, our God is a God of fire. And when the Holy Ghost moves into our lives, whoa, what a blessing. You see, in the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost would come upon men and He would cause them to, to perform mighty acts of God. Some of them would even prophesy. The Holy Ghost would fall upon them, but the Holy Ghost would then, He would, he would remove Himself from them. It was not the dispensation where the Holy Ghost would indwell in them. But oh, there came that day in the book of Acts when God turned the page and said the Holy Ghost was not only going to come upon men but He was going to come in men. And Jesus said in John 7 and 37 that there's going to be that river that begins to flow out of you. My God, I was there as a teenage boy with my hands lifted toward heaven and before long the Holy Ghost of God Amen, began to flow in my life. And friend, I'm telling you, it was like fire shut up in my bones. And God started a fire then that has never gone out. I would to God one more time. Amen. God do it. I said, God do it one more time. Hey, we used to we used to crank open the windows and the neighbors used to hear it sing, didn't they? Was that was that our movement they used to was that, was, was, was that us that day? They used to say, let's go to the holiness church and watch them shout. Maybe I'm preaching to, maybe I'm in the wrong church. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that us they used to talk about? After a good service, we can see the bobby pins. Did you have a good service? Yeah, well, how do you know? Well, look at all the bobby pins. They shouted their hair down. Look at it. Like I told you last night, my grandma, she shot her hair down so many bobby pins, just like a machine gun. Do, 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 do. All over the place. I mean, we had church. Hey, friend, we had church. We had a move of God. God was moving in our midst. Have we got complacent with that? I said, we're rooted in Pentecost. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that washes our sins away. I'm for sanctified living. I'm for living separate from the world and separate unto God. But here's what I know as well. It's God's plan for the church to be full of the Holy Ghost. I said it's God's plan for you and I to be full of the Holy Ghost. And I say, God, on this Wednesday night, let there be Pentecostal singing. That when we get to singing, let the power of God get to moving. God, while I'm preaching tonight, let the Holy Ghost get to moving. Amen. And I believe there's such a thing as Pentecostal worship. When we get to worship in God, the Holy Ghost gets to moving. And before long, we forget about what time it is. We forget about everybody else. And we get lost in the presence of the sweet Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah to the Lord of glory. 
I've seen them roll. I've seen them crawl. I've seen them flip and run. Amen. Oh, God, take us back to the day when we went to the house of God. We didn't know what we were going to expect to see. What do you expect when you come to the house of the Lord tonight? Jesus concerning John the Baptist said to the disciples, what went you out to see? Well, what would you expect to see? A reed shaken in the wind? Somebody in soft raiment? What did you expect to see? Let me ask you. What did you expect to see in revival tonight? You! Hallelujah. What do you expect to see? I believe this younger generation, they've got the same right to expect the move of God that you did. And here's what I tell some of the middle-aged folks in my church. Hey, I'm 42 years old. I know I don't look it, but I'm 42. You say, well, you look 50. Well, I didn't mean it that way, but here's what I'm telling you. Some of us middle-aged folks, the church... That was the church that was handed to us. The church that was handed to us was full of the power and the glory of God. Was it not? Some of you that were born in the 50s and 60s when you come to church, uh, amen, folks were getting saved. Uh, World War II was over. The churches were full. Uh, amen. During Brother Johnson's revival, they talked about this church running 60, 70, or 80, whatever it was. Uh, amen. The churches were full. Uh, there were miracles. Uh, I mean, God was doing great things. Uh, folks were getting saved. Uh, folks were getting sanctified. Uh, and the church was full of the power and the glory. Glory of God. Amen. Preachers didn't have to beg us to praise God. They didn't have to sing three songs. Amen. On the first song of the first, the first note of the first song, we were worshiping God. We didn't have a lot. We didn't have much money. We weren't living in fine homes. We were coming in on a wing and a prayer a lot of times, but we were glad to be in the house of God, and our hearts were full of the joy of God and the church was just bubbling over. I mean, and we were handed a church that was full of the glory of God. But 20, 2013, amen, some of these young folks that are coming on, all we're talking about is what it used to be. We're talking about what it used to be like. And we're not handing them the same church that we were handed. We've lost some of the glory. We've lost some of the fire. We've lost some of the revivals. We've lost some of our faith and we're handing them a church that is not anything like what it used to be. And I'm saying, my God, on a Wednesday night, put it in our hearts, put it in our soul. Give us the glory. Give us the glory. Give us the glory. Give us the fire. Give us the power. Give us the move of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I say, God, send the glory. I say, God, send the glory. He's the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. If He did it yesterday. Woo! I said, if He did it yesterday, He can do it right now. But let me break it on down for you. Are we pursuing? Are we pursuing Pentecost? If God wants us to have it, I've got a family member. If God wants me to have the Holy Ghost, He knows where I sit. Well, you know what? As far as I know, He's been in church His whole life. He's 72 years old. And he don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He'll be in church this Sunday. He may be a good man. He may make it to heaven without the Holy Ghost, you say. And I know the blood will get us there. But I'm telling you, you're going to work for God in this world. If you're going to live for God in this hour, you better be full of the Holy Ghost. I say, you better be full of the Holy Ghost. Let me ask you. Wouldn't you like to see the glory of God?
come back into his church. Woo! But it leads me to the pursuit of Pentecost. Jesus said, get to Jerusalem. And I'd be naive to think that if the same spirit of complacency is trying to get in the church of God, and is trying to get into the assemblies of God, it's not trying to get in our movement as well. Maybe you have a lot of shouting. Maybe you have a lot of Holy Ghost eruptions in your services. Most places I go, don't. And I know in Savannah, it's because if we do, it's because I'm trying to fan the flame. It's because I'm trying to make sure, hey God, we don't want the fire to go out. Are we still rooted in Pentecost? Are we still rooted? I know where I know it's in our history books. I, I know it's part of our heritage. But is it part of reality? Is it part of right now? Can these young boys go to school tomorrow and say, hey, let me tell you. Let me tell you how about my grandma. Let me tell you about what I saw in our church last night. Let me tell you about how the fire of God fell. We saw so folks getting saved. We saw them shouting. We saw them speaking in tongues. Hey, friend, they need to see it as well. But Pentecost, it is not dead, but it's alive. I don't care whether you got ten or you got a hundred. God give us a fresh demonstration of the the power and the glory of God. Anybody ready to pursue Pentecost? Anybody say, God, it's for us. It's for our children. It's for our church. Why don't you stand to your feet tonight? Let's lift our hands toward heaven and say, God, visit us with the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Come on, church, let's praise Him. Oh, somebody praise your way right into a move of the Holy Ghost. Somebody praise your way right into the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Let's get back to obeying the Lord. Let's get back to obeying God. Let's get back to old time Pentecost. Let's get back to a move of His Spirit. Just like they had in the day before. Send a revival. Glory to God. God send the fire. Hallelujah. 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 Why don't you just obey the Lord tonight? Why don't you say, God, my family, my church, we need a move of the Holy Ghost. Why don't you step out tonight, come around the altar, begin to worship God, begin to praise Him and magnify the Lord. Hallelujah.